so we have uh, with us uh, uh, Nena Lal Kidwai, noted industry uh, um, uh, uh, leader here. Uh, Ms. Kidwai, thank you so much for being with us on NDTV. Uh, what do you make of the RBI decision of leaving rates unchanged? Uh, were you disappointed? Uh, no, not disappointed or surprised because uh, uh, I was pretty much in line with uh, a lot of the market which expected the rates to remain unchanged. And uh, indeed what is significant is uh, the dovish sort of stand that is coming through from the RBI, uh, particularly uh, on inflation where uh, the indication that uh, inflation would actually go down further and quite strongly over the next two uh, quarters is an indication of what RBI believes. So in my case, not surprised at all. So do you believe that uh, soon enough there will be another rate cut? Because post-February, when the RBI changed to the neutral stance, a lot of questions were being raised that perhaps the rate cutting cycle is all but over. But if the RBI itself is expecting a moderation in inflation, isn't the case now stronger for a rate cut? I think very much so and I think you'll see it reflected in the mood in the equity markets as a result because the statements uh, being quite dovish uh, in indicating uh, the lower inflation rates are an indication that uh, there could be a rate cut and I think uh, you know a lot of the market uh, maybe expects this in the sort of August September period uh, to see if rates indeed play out the way RBI is indicated and the way uh, we all think, which is really that inflation stays down, uh, then there would be a good reason to have a rate cut. Uh, needless to say, uh, it's uh, uh, clearly out there, the finance minister's own wish that the rate cut happens. Uh, clearly, he has an eye to growth. And it is not surprising that uh, both the industry and the finance minister would be aligned on the side of seeing that rate cut. But having said that, I think what we have to watch very closely is not just what RBI does in terms of rate cuts, but the ability of the banks, uh, uh, the desire, yes, but the ability of the banks to transmit that into the market because in itself, otherwise, uh, the benefit just doesn't flow through and the transmission has been a big issue over the last few years. So are you saying there is scope for uh, further uh, bank uh, lending rate cuts coming in? We've already seen um, a number of banks uh, uh, reduce the MCLR rates, be it by 10, 15 basis points, because you know liquidity is a flush, and now the RBI has cut the SLR again. So uh, even without uh, the headline rate changing, do you think banks will now uh, keep their rates even lower from here on? No, I don't think banks will cut rates uh, right now because uh, the reasons uh, why this would be is deposit rates are showing little indication of moving down easily. Uh, deposit rates are at the end of the day benchmark against returns in uh, other uh, investment instruments uh, and so they have to be competitive. And uh, the other is just the ability of the banks uh, given the high pressure they're already having in terms of uh, net interest margins and uh, the NPAs and the impact therein. So the ability of the banks to cut rates is, uh, is not high. And in a scenario such as this, I wouldn't expect too much of that. Uh, however, with risk weightings changing for some of the sectors, real estate, housing, uh, <coughs> there could be some reprieve for those sectors and uh, at least as uh, banks go back to look at this impact, uh, there is a chance uh, that we see housing uh, loans and rates therein move down, which would be a big positive because if you look at the fact that the real estate sector anywhere in the world is a big driver of growth, and in India, uh, this came to a standstill for a variety of reasons well known, including demonetization. If this sector can be kick-started, it would have a beneficial effect across a number of sectors uh, that indeed uh, feed into this sector. So uh, to the extent that uh, the RW, uh, you know, the risk weightings therein help with a reduction for the consumer in uh, the housing sector of uh, loans and so on, then uh, yes, we would at least have that benefit flow through. But uh, reduction of rates uh, across the board for industry, for borrowers, I think we'll have to wait uh, a little while longer. 
Ms. Kutwai, uh, retail uh, credit growth in any case has been strong and uh, lower rates would be welcome there. Uh, but what is the liquidity situation in the system now? Uh, because call money rates in any case are lower than uh, 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 the, the reverse depot rate. So uh, what happens to those seeking large uh, loans, uh, by especially the industry, uh, given that uh, you know, a gross fixed capital formation has contracted in the January to March period? Yeah. So unfortunately, uh, the linkage right now between liquidity, which is high, as you rightly point out, and uh, lending are not uh, indeed uh, tied too closely. And the reasons are the ability of banks to take risks are indeed uh, very low, given uh, the punishing uh, NPAs as we have them. So as NPAs stabilize and some of these NPAs work their way out, uh, the risk-taking uh, appetite of banks may come up again. Uh, there are a few sectors which banks are comfortable lending to, and of course they benefit from uh, a, a liquid uh, situation as we have today. But uh, across the board, the sectors that need the money most are an issue.